2 Kings chapter number 4. We begin reading verse 38. The Bible says that Elisha came again to Gilgal, and there was a dearth in the land. And the sons of the prophets were sitting before him, and he said unto his servant, Set on the great pot, and seethe pottage for the sons of the prophets. And one went out into the field to gather herbs, and found a wild vine, and gathered thereof wild gourds his lap full, and came and shred them into the pot of pottage, for they knew them not. So they poured out for the men to eat, and it came to pass as they were eating of the pottage that they cried out and said, O thou man of God, there is death in the pot, and they could not eat thereof. But he said, Then bring meal, and he cast it into the pot, and he said, Pour out for the people that they may eat, and there was no harm in the pot. Let's pray. Father, we bless your holy name. I thank you, Lord, for this dear missionary and his family. I pray you'd supply every need and you'd use them greatly in the days to come that many more would be saved and that fruit would abound uh, to your account for your glory for somebody just wanting to do a little bit more. Now help us tonight. Bless those working with the children. Bless those working with the teens. And help us tonight and set in heavenly places. Help us to be obedient. And God get uh, glory to your name and we'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen and amen. I want you to look at several things to deal with these verses. I want you to notice first of all the famine. Look again in verse 38. And Elisha came again to Gilgal and there was a dearth in the land. Dearth meant a famine. There was a famine. They didn't have anything to eat. Uh, 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 crops weren't growing. Uh, it was in a mess. That and they had a famine in the land. Then I want you to notice, if you will, the faith. Look what it says again in verse 38. And the sons of the prophets were sitting before him, and he said unto his servant, Set on the great pot, and seethe pottage for the sons of the prophets. Now, it, they're in a famine. There's uh, not anything to eat. I mean, they're struggling. They're, they're in a hopeless situation. And here comes Elisha, the man of God. He looks at his servant. Uh, the sons of the prophets are sitting there. They're starving. Uh, and he says, set on the great pot. What faith? Uh, he said, put on the great pot. Uh, I imagine those sons of the prophets are saying, hey, but we don't have anything to put in the pot. We don't have anything to eat. Uh, and he said, seethe pottage. That word seethe means boil. Uh, he says, boil some pottage. Uh, uh, we're going to have a feast here tonight. Uh, set on the great pot. What a faith. Uh, uh, in other words, he said, we just need to do a little more. Uh, uh, we need to have some faith uh, 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 because without faith it's impossible to please God. We see the famine. We see faith. Uh, now notice the field. It's 39. And one went out into the field to gather herbs. We see him go out to the field to gather some herbs. Why? They're going to have some pottage. They put on the pot. The sons of the prophets are hungry. Uh, they're going to need to eat. We see the famine, faith, the field. Now notice what they find. Look at verse 39. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, found a wild vine and gathered thereof wild gourds, his lap full, and came and shred them into the pot of pottage, for they knew them not. He went out. He's looking for something to eat. Uh, he's not finding any corn. He's not finding any wheat. Uh, he's not finding uh, 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 any... Uh, 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 peas or uh, uh, green beans or anything. But he looks and here's something. Uh, he said this is better than nothing. Uh, so he gathers his lap full uh, and he goes and he dumps them in the pot. He's in the field and he finds something. He says, surely this will be a blessing. Hmm? Now and then notice if you will it's futile. Look at verse number 40. So they poured out for the men to eat. He came to pass they were eating of the pottage that he cried out and said, O thou man of God, there is death in the pot, and they could not eat thereof. Can I say, not everything that you throw in your pot is worth eating. But this was about to kill him. It's futile. He said, there's death in the pot. Now, I want to tell you something. If you're hungry, you're thankful to have something. But if the something's going to kill you, you'd better be hungry. Hmm? Amen. But then notice the flower. Look what it says. Verse number 41. And he said, man of God, then bring meal. You find meal in the Old Testament is basically a substitute for flour. I'm here to tell you. 
in this day and age, you, you wouldn't say give me some flour to eat. But you put flour in grandma's hands. And she'd make you a potato pancake. She'd make you something. He said, throw some, throw some meal in there. Throw some flour in there. So what happened? He said, pour it out. What happened? There wasn't no more death in the pot. Hmm? Now, I don't have time to get into all this, but Elisha, if you remember, asked Elijah for a double portion of what he had. Yeah. And this is one of the early miracles of Elisha. There's a, a situation where there's death in the pot and the man of God says, throw in some meal. There wasn't no power in the meal, but there was power in the God behind the man of God who said, throw the meal in there and the death is now removed. Huh? Well, uh, I want you to get a hold of this. We'll get to the message. I want you to get a hold of this. We live in a day and age where there's a famine. There's a dearth. The Bible says in the last days there'll be a famine for the hearing of the word of God. Can I say, uh, 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 in this day of famine, we can go out to the field. The field's a picture of the world. And you can go out to the world, and you'll go out to the world tomorrow and Tuesday and, and come back to church Wednesday and go out Thursday and Friday. Yeah. But you've got to be careful when you're out there in the world because just not anything you pick up out there is going to feed your soul. A lot of things out there hurt your soul. And some of them bring death to your spirituality. You can uh, uh, read about all that Joel has to say, and Joel will not give you uh, 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 sustenance for your soul. Hmm? Amen. A lot of things sound churchy, sounds religious. A lot of authors out there writing books, that don't mean it's going to feed you. Right. Hmm? Can I say, not everything you find is going to help you. Some of it will kill you, to kill your family. Hmm. You better get to where you can get some good meal from the Lord his table will feed you and sustain you well I'm interested in that faith part he said set on the great pot there's a famine the sons of the prophets are hungry other people are hungry the man of God looks to his servant Gehazi and says set on the great pot there's no hope in any of those folks that anything's coming out of that pot, but the man of God knew that there was something for those people coming out of that pot. I want to preach for a few minutes on that thought, sit on the great pot. Will somebody sit on the great pot? Will somebody get a burden to do just a little bit more? Will somebody have a little bit of faith around here? wouldn't hurt my uh, uh, heart at all if on Sunday nights uh, 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 the pews were full, the children's place was full, the teens were full. Uh, we just need somebody to sit on the great pot. Are you listening? Uh, uh, we've been bringing too many uh, little pots. Uh, 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 listen, uh, thank God for a little pot, but why settle for a little pot uh, when you can have a great big pot? Uh, hey, we got a great big God. Uh, we need to ask Him to increase our faith. Uh, hey, uh, uh, Miss Marcy, uh, I I'd love to see your whole family here. I'd love to see Mary have sit behind you because uh, your family's here. Uh, say, no, I'd love to see your boy and all your grandbabies here. Uh, I'd love to see Brandon and Courtney here and Nick here. Uh, uh, Phil, I'd love to see them lost loved ones them co-workers here. Uh, Bob and Sonny, I'd love to see Clint and Amy here. Uh, hey, are you listening? Uh, we got room. Uh, we got needs. Uh, somebody needs to sit on the great pot. Uh, hey, uh, uh, we need to see them not just raise their hand or loss, uh, but get in the altar and get born again when it come. Uh, hey, God loves Fly. He wants to save him. Uh, uh, Fly just needs to get saved. Uh, hey, we need to set out the great pot. Uh, our problem is we've been satisfied with not having the great pot. We're satisfied. Oh, Brother Doug, pray for my lost love and let's just set out the pot and let God do something. Uh, why don't we have a little bit of faith that God's still well able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Uh, Jeremiah said, call unto me and I'll answer thee. Show thee great mighty things that thou knowest not. Uh, somebody sit on the great pot. Uh, let's get the Lord on the scene uh, and let God give the increase. And I got thinking about that. If we're going to uh, sit on the great pot, first of all, there needs to be great, great expectation. We don't see much happening because we don't have much expectation anything's going to happen. Uh, thank God for a little faith, but give me some folks with some great faith. It's going to take great expectation. 
Elisha knew that God was going to show up and help him folks that day. That's why he said, put on the great pot. He didn't say, go get a little skillet. Give me the great pot. Huh? We need some folks with some great expectation. Now, how many of you believe God's still on the throne? How many of you believe that God's still able to do everything? How many of you believe God doesn't need anything to do everything? Uh, well, why don't we truly put some uh, of that in action? Sit on the pot. Why don't somebody just uh, fill out one of these ornaments and say, I I'm praying that I can do a little more, more. I just want to do a little more. God, give me a little more faith. Uh, when he gives you more faith, ask for some more faith. Uh, and just keep going until you get great faith. Uh, Amen. Have the great pot set on. We're going to need great expectation. Can I say this? Uh, we need great exigency. Exigency. I, I know I wouldn't say that word right when I, when I wrote it down. But let me tell you what it means. Huh? A great need. Hmm? E-X-I-G-E-N-C-Y. Hillbillies can't say that word. Don't even write it down, Clint. You can't say it either, huh? <laughs> I haven't looked in the dictionary. You remember what those used to look like? I looked in the dictionary because it breaks down how to say the syllables. I still said it wrong. Whatever it means, it means this. There's got to be a great need. Huh? Anybody, anybody know somebody that needs God? Anybody need God to move in your life? We need to sit on the great pot. Huh? Boy, we... We, we satisfied seeing a little babe in a manger. I got news for you, he's not the babe in the manger. I got news for you, he's not the broken shell on the cross. He's the king of glory. Uh, and we need to have great faith uh, and bring our great needs to him. Uh, my dear friends, he can do something with it, huh? Thought about this, it's going to take great effort. A great pot wasn't handled by just one person. Amen. Mm. It's going to take some great effort. Mm. Boy, didn't all them stories sound good? Wasn't that wonderful? He printed uh, 10,000 tracks and was, he, you know, had 5,000 extra and the guy wants five, uh, half a million. Huh? He said, wow, wasn't that a wonderful story? The truth of the matter is, it took great effort to print the 200,000 that he printed. Huh? He had to get the paper. Had to raise the money to get the paper. Had to print them. Had, had the ink to print them. Had to run the press. Had to, had to fold or fold them. I mean, they had to box them. I mean, that's a lot of effort. Boy, didn't it sound good? All that, them stories of going to them prisons. Mm, do you realize it took effort to get to the prison? Had to put gas in the vehicle. Had to drive the vehicle uh, however many miles it was to go. Had to pray over the message. Had to had the right message. Had to go through the clearance. Had to learn about the Muslims and the Wicca and all that. Took a lot of effort in order to go in there and see them folks say, huh? Did, did you hear him right? He kept going and he, uh, seeing that old fella, and that old fella ran him out, ran his wife out. Uh, uh, but the old fella finally showed up, uh, and he showed up, and it took six months, maybe a year. Finally got born again. A lot of effort. Uh, 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 didn't happen the first time he went in and saw him. Uh, he didn't give him a track and see him say, took a lot of effort, took a burden, took a, uh, some work and some labor. Uh, somebody had to grab horns of the altar, uh, get a hold of God, uh, and stay before God till God moved on the scene. Uh, I'll tell you something all those people I named every one of them know they need to be in church Amen. it's going to take some effort for God to make them miserable enough to get them to church sure. they're out of church because they're comfortable being out of church mm, the little gospel track a little phone call may not get them to church Oh, maybe they'll come and sit in the back and wave and say, I'm here, leave me alone. But you know what it's going to take to get them right with God? It's going to take some effort for somebody to get a hold of God so God will trouble them enough to where they'll come to themselves in their hog pen uh, and get up and come back the same road they left uh, and get right with Almighty God. It's going to take some effort. That's why we do just an ornament, just to challenge you to get involved in the church family. But somebody's got to take some effort to pray. Somebody's got to exercise that faith that when you're sitting around the house and God says you need to call somebody, you be obedient and call them because God's working. Yeah. It's going to take a great effort. It's going to take great enthusiasm. It's going to take some great motivation. Yeah. Amen. Mm. I'm going to tell you what's happening to the church. We've been lulled to sleep. 
voice sitting on a church pew uh, 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 sucking flies out of the air, snoring while the preaching's going on. It's going to take somebody to get excited about God. It's going to take some enthusiasm. I just want a little bit more. I just want, we just need somebody to be enthusiastic about the Lord. Hey, be enthusiastic about somebody getting saved. Be enthusiastic about going to jail and the nursing home huh? and going down the street and inviting somebody to church. Somebody needs to have some excitement in their soul. This enthusiasm will motivate you. Because I'm going to tell you, some days you don't feel good. And some days it's not convenient. And some days it's a chore. But if you're enthused about it, you'll do it. If you're not enthused, you'll have a great excuse. You're welcome. Mm. I'm going to say, if we're going to put out the great pot, see, great things happen. It's going to take great entirety. In other words, unity. Where there is no unity, there's no unction. Right. See, this is a great pot I want. It's one we're all going to have to get underneath and lift it. Are you listening? Sure. Just few can't handle this pot. It's going to take everybody. And if you aren't grabbing your end of the pot, the pot's never going to get moved. Hmm? Amen. It's going to take some great effort and some great entirety. Hmm? Uh, it's, it's a harm to our churches that when it comes to your needs, you want everybody to pray for your needs. When it comes to somebody else's needs, you don't, you don't give a flip. You don't pray for their needs. It's all about me, all about me, all about me, all about me. No, it's all about Jesus. And it's all about bearing one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. We've got to get in this thing together. And the preacher doesn't quote it. We reap what we sow. If I get concerned about and burdened about your loved ones and start laboring to see them get in the house of God, you know what? Somebody's going to get a burden about my loved ones. Are you listening? Huh? Oh, God help us to realize that we're fitly framed together for a reason. It's to get this great pot set on its spot. I thought about this. It's going to take great enterprise. Great enterprise. Things just don't happen. It's going to take effort. It's going to take enthusiasm. But it's going to take enterprise. We need to be ready. We need to be ready for when God gets to moving. You can't let him start moving and then get ready. Why do you think the Bible says draw nigh to God? He'll draw nigh to you. You've got to be ready. Then it's going to take great resolve, commitment. Too many people quit right before the blessing comes. It's going to take resolve. We need to get, get in this thing and be in it for the long haul. And be committed to it. And then it's going to take a, a, a being rigid. Hmm? You've got to be able to withstand some things. Hmm? Too many have let a little fox spoil their vine. Too many have let something little cause them to quit trusting God, quit serving God, quit putting God first, quit being faithful, and just be lulled to sleep. Just little things. Hmm? Somebody didn't shake your hand, or the preacher made over somebody didn't make over you. The preacher let somebody sing, didn't let you sing. Uh, somebody else got to, you know, do something, you didn't get to do it. Now, why, 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 why? You need to be rigid. Regardless what comes against me, I'm going to stand for the Lord. I'm going to serve him, huh? And then it's going to take great encouragement. I'm going to tell you something. God's people need to be encouraged. Amen. We'll hear stories about folks being saved somewhere, and then you've got lost lovings aren't being saved. You need to be encouraged. The song Brittany sang this morning, only four days late, he's right on time. The Lord hadn't forgot about you. Cast all your cares on him, for he careth for you. We need to encourage one another. We need to help one another. We need to be there one for It's going to take great encouragement. Because we have a great foe who does everything he can to suck the wind out of our sails. So we have one another. We're to encourage one another. And be there one for another. Hmm? We need to set the great pot. Set on the great pot. Get some folks excited. Why? Because what came out of that pot sustained them and helped them. And we're still talking about it today. Yes, and I promise you, if we'll get the great pot, what comes out of it, the results that come out of that pot, will change people's lives now and for eternity. Right. So we need somebody to sit on the great pot. Somebody to have some faith. Somebody be willing to get behind it, do something. Hmm? Told you all at the beginning of this year, you got a burden 
for, if you'd get a burden for souls, I'd get a burden for the building. Need a new building. As I stand here tonight, I don't know how in the world we're going to get the new building. But I can't get it off my mind. I can't get it off my heart. Amen. So we need the building. Somebody needs to sit on the great pot. That's all I know. We just need to let God do what God's going to do. That's all I can tell you. huh? I, I can't tell you anything else. But I remember when we was in that little old building over there next door. And I remember when we had about 25 people, Brother Randy. And uh, 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 I, I said, we need a building. People looked at me like we had two heads. I had one fellow said, well, don't you think we ought to fill this one up first? Well, you know, here we are. Now we've outgrown this one. Now, I didn't know any more then than I know now. Other than the fact, we had a need. But I know one who's able to meet the needs. And I know one who's got the plan. And got all the answers. So we just need to put on the great pot and let him do what he's going to do. Are you listening? Sure. But we've got to get behind this thing. You said you have needs. There's a great need. In our church family alone, there's a great need of people. They're out of church. Some of them backslid, some of them lost. Just within our realms of our church family. There's a great need. And then, friends, you don't have to throw a rock 100 feet. And there's great needs all around our church. There's great needs in our community. They're building houses again in our community. There are people coming in like crazy. Amazon's bringing 3,000 people to our community. I mean, there's a great need. Now, we could be like a lot of Baptist churches and sit back and say, well, what we've got is good enough. And the Spirit of God will depart from us like Ichabod. And they'll go on down the road to somebody that wants to put on a great pot and do something for God. We can sit here and watch all them people coming into our community not hear the gospel and die and go to hell. Or we can sit on a great pot and say there's a great God who loves these people coming to our community, who loves our families that are out of church, who loves people in this community, and God wants to save every one of them. And we don't know what, what it's going to take to get them saved, but we just want to do a little bit more and see what God's going to do. I mean, God's no respecter of person. God gave them a press 12 years newer than the one that was handed to them. I mean, God's done all that for him. I mean, look at him. He's not handsome. He don't have a lot of great abilities. God did it for him. He'll do it for all of us ugly hillbillies, won't he? You know what the difference is? Having a burden. A burden to do a little more. Hmm? Just think if we all did a little more. That's right. I'm asking you to put the whole pot on. What if we all just did a little more? Think you could do a little more for God? Just a little more. Think you could do a little more? Can you do a little more? Can you do a little more? Can you do a little more? Can we all do a little more? What well, if we all did a little more? You know what that is? That would be a great pot. If we all just did a little more. Huh? Little as much in God's hands. Huh? If we all just did, did, have you ever read in the Bible what God did with a little? Took a little lad's little lad's lunch, fed five thousand men plus women and children. Took two widows' mites just a little bit. Huh? Said she gave more than all the rest of them. Huh? He took three little Hebrew boys, confounded the king, threw them in a the furnace, and they didn't burn. Are you? If you just go and look at all that God did with little things, hmm? let's think if we all just gave a little more. What great things God could do. So there's the charge tonight. Somebody needs to sit on a great pot. It's going to take all of us to get it where it needs to be. So I'm challenging you and I'm challenging myself. Let's do a little bit more. And see what great God we serve. Hmm? I'm not counting on the Sunday morning crowd. I'm not counting on anybody. I'm counting on this crowd here tonight. Let's do a little bit more. And see what great things. God will do. All right, I'm done. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, get a song of invitation. I challenge you. You willing to do a little more? Why don't you come tell God, God, I want to do a little more. Hmm? If you don't see the need, shame on you. Are you willing to do a little bit more? Somebody sit on the great pot. See what God will do with it. But Ray's picking out a song. Folks are praying. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the missionary's challenge. Thank you for the challenge from the Word of God. Help us to sit on the great pot and see how great a God you really are. Have your way tonight. Burden our hearts to do a little bit more. 
And then God take that little and do great things and change people's lives. And we'll thank you for it. For it's Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.